Texas bluesman Lightning Hopkins doesn't just sing the blues, he is the blues. And in today's show, you're gonna learn five valuable guitar and life lessons from this blues icon. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 207 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show's all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC family members. Do you ever feel like you set a guitar goal and then you completely lose track of it? Do you feel like you maybe need some help setting and tracking your guitar goals? Well, today I have an extremely important announcement about the upcoming Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party, its purpose, and why you should most certainly be there. Plus, you'll get a sneak peek at the bluegrass lick that the TAC fam is working on this week. And as usual, your dose of acoustic news you can use awaits, which includes some honest thoughts about Gibson's new guitar line, a pop punk song, my favorite pop punk song, covered on the acoustic guitar by one of our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers, and much, much more. But first, let's learn from one of the greats, Lightning Hopkins. Samuel John Lightning Hopkins was born in 1912 in the town Centerville, Texas. At the age of eight, he met Blind Lemon Jefferson and was clearly bit by the guitar bug. From that point forward, he played and continued to push the boundaries of Texas blues music, all the way up until his passing on January 30th, 1982. Now, I first heard Lightning Hopkins probably less than 10 years ago, and I was immediately struck with how simple yet effective his guitar playing was. And in fact, the first two lessons I wanna share with you today involve his guitar playing. So let me go ahead and grab my guitar and show you what I'm talking about. Lightning Hopkins lesson number one is the shuffle accent. This has everything to do with how he played guitar. Most of Lightning Hopkins songs were in a 12 bar format. And most of the times the way he played through that 12 bar format was with a blues shuffle. Now, if you're not familiar with what a blues shuffle is, let me show it to you really quick. It's actually pretty easy. We're gonna be fretting the A string on the second, fourth, and fifth fret. And included with those fretted notes, we'll be playing the open low E string. That's gonna sound like this. That's the basic blues shuffle, but that's not the lesson. The lesson is the shuffle accent. See, with that blues shuffle, a lot of times it gets pretty monotonous. That's not a bad thing, but what ends up happening is you lose touch with where the one is or where the measure ends and the next one begins. Now, to circumvent that situation, that, that hypnosis, if you will, Lightning Hopkins would accent the and of four. Now, I don't know if he was doing this to keep track of his measures, likely he wasn't, but this was just kind of one of those isms of his playing that I've noticed in listening to his records. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Let me count with the shuffle so you understand where the and of four is, and then I'll show you how to accent it. Okay, here's the count. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So that last beat of the measure, the and of four, that's where we're gonna do an accent. And we're gonna achieve that accent by taking our index finger and striking the B string and the G string up, just like that, or the high E in the B. Doesn't sound like much. And it's not, especially out of context. It sounds like you accidentally hit the strings of the guitar. But in context with the shuffle, you'll see what I mean by it being a shuffle accent. Here's what that sounds like. So essentially what you're doing is marking the end of a measure. Again, I'm not sure if that's what was running through Lightning Hopkins' head or if that's just simply how he played and how he felt the music, but either way, it's an incredibly useful musical tool. Lightning Hopkins' lesson number two is to milk it. Tone, what the hell do you mean by milking it? Well, a lot of times when Lightning Hopkins would play a solo, he would play a single note for measure after measure after measure he would milk it. Now, I don't think he was thinking, oh, I'm playing this for six measures. I think he was simply just feeling the music. But what ends up happening is he's really dialing in on that single note and it adds a ton of emphasis to his playing. Now, the way we're gonna look at it is in terms of breaking up your rhythm guitar playing. We're gonna move to an E7 chord, emphasize the heck out of it, milk it, if you will, and then we're gonna come back to a blues shuffle. Here's what I mean by milking it. So 
So there you have it, that's milking it. He's taking that E7 chord and really driving it home, really playing the heck out of it to emphasize not only a breakup in rhythm, but also just driving home the blues. That is the sound of the blues. And that's a technique you can use with that chord to break up your rhythm guitar, or it's a technique you can use while you're soloing, just playing a single note over and over and over again to kind of really get all the mojo you can out of it. Lightning Hopkins lesson number three, know your roots. It was quite clear that from a young age, Lightning Hopkins was way into the guitar and he never forgot his first guitar. He never forgot where he came from. And here's proof that that's the case. Well, my family, uh, we uh, come up uh, Leon County, Centerville, Texas. You know, raised cotton and corn and peas and peanuts and things like that. So I got me a guitar of my own when I got be eight years old. I got me a cigar box. I cut me a hole in the round hole in the middle of it. Take me a little piece of plank, nail it on to that cigar box, and I got me some screen wire, and I got me a tune out of it. And from that, I kept my tune. Lightning Hopkins lesson number four find a guitar guide. I mentioned early on in the show that at the age of eight, Lightning Hopkins met Blind Lemon Jefferson. But it wasn't just a simple meeting where they shook hands and went their separate ways. No, Blind Lemon Jefferson actually taught Lightning Hopkins. And on one of Lightning Hopkins' Smithsonian Folkways albums, he actually recounts his experience with Blind Lemon Jefferson. It's so cool, it's my favorite part of the album. And here's a quick snippet of it right now. Yes, it's been a long time, but you know I can remember some things that we used to do. I was playing with him when I was eight years old. That would made me such a guitar player in a way of speaking because he never learned me a note, but he'd always play in front of me, and I'd learn my own in a way of speaking is this. Mm -hmm. We went a long ways together, and, and we used to play at a place you call Buffalo, Texas. That was about 75, going toward Dallas. Mm -hmm. So the last I heard of Blind Lemon, he was in Dallas. And so I heard that he got frozen up there, so I didn't know, but he was nice to me in every way, and I appreciated little things he done. Mm -hmm. And he used to holler at me, say, boy, you better play it right. Yeah. And I'd go ahead on and play it with him, and he'd say, you know it's one kind favor I'll ask to you. And you see me and him would just cat like that, you know. And I just come on up to be one of them people. Now I'm an old man now, <laughs> near about old, because I think I'm 16 tomorrow. <laughs> uh -huh. Lightning Hopkins lesson number five, and probably the most important lesson of this entire lineup is play from the heart. I know it sounds cliche, I know it sounds obvious, but the way that Lightning Hopkins talks about it in this interview is so perfect, every single guitar player needs to hear it. So let's go ahead and listen. I play a guitar, I play it from my heart and soul. Yeah, I play my own, own music. And I, I just keep it up because the blues is something that people can't get rid of. Yeah, and if you ever have the blues, remember what I tell you. You'll always hear this in your heart. What an incredible artist, what an incredible blues icon. Now, if you haven't heard of Lightning Hopkins aside from today's show, do yourself a favor and check out any of his live albums. And I say this because the music is awesome, but the in-between song banter is even awesomer. Yes, I just used the word awesomer. The in-between song banter gives you a sense of who Lightning Hopkins was as a person, but it also gives you a sense of his perspective on music and his approach to the blues. So again, check out those live albums. I think you'll find them to be quite the blues treat. Now I do have a question for you, and that is this. How do you like these artist profile segments that I've been including on the Acoustic Tuesday show? Do you dig them? And if you do, is there an artist that you'd like to see profiled? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. 
Now it is time for your new favorite segment of the show, the Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge. Yes, it is time. Within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, every single day focuses on one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Mondays, we look at technique. Tuesdays, we look at a guitar lick. Wednesdays, we look at soloing. Thursdays, we look at rhythm guitar. And Fridays, we focus on chord transitions. It is Tuesday, it's Acoustic Tuesday. And within Tony's Acoustic Challenge on Tuesdays, we learn a guitar lick. Well, you know what? I decided to include that in the Acoustic Tuesday show. So without further ado, let's hit the studio. I'm gonna grab my guitar and let's dive into the Tack Tuesday Guitar Lick Challenge. Punch it. That's the name of your guitar lick challenge today because it uses pull-offs to punch the rhythm. In fact, whenever you play bluegrass guitar, at least in my opinion, and you add a pull-off, it does this thing to the rhythm. It, it adds an exclamation point. It punches it, if you will. Hence the name of today's guitar lick. In fact, hence the name of all of the challenges within Tony's Acoustic Challenge this week. Every single challenge has a boxing themed name because in every challenge, you'll be integrating pull-offs in one form or another to punch the rhythm. So let me go ahead and play this lick for you. This is a bluegrass guitar lick in the key of G. I think you're really gonna dig it. And I think you're gonna understand pretty quickly why it's named Punch It. one of those licks that if you blink, you're gonna miss it. But in all seriousness, let me play it just a little bit slower so you can kind of digest what's happening here. And the part to me that really punches it is the final part. I mean, a pull off into that open G string, mm it definitely adds an exclamation point to the rhythm. Now, for you folks that want to learn this note by note, TACFAM, all you have to do is log in on your homepage, click Start Challenge, and you'll be whisked away to this very guitar lick challenge. You'll go right into the teaching video, and after that, you can play along with me in the play along video. And if you're more of a tab learner, or if you wanna pull up the tab just to make sure what you're playing is what I'm playing, go ahead and click the tab icon in the lower right hand corner, and you can pull up that tab in a separate window and follow right along with me with exactly what I'm playing. So, so how do you use this lick within a musical context? This is one of those licks that to me, once you learn it, it's kind of like, okay, this is really cool. I want to play it as much as I can. Where do I place it? There's actually a lot of places that you can use this. And I'm going to show you just a few examples just to kind of get your wheels turning a little bit as to where you could use this in your guitar playing. The first instance is just simply playing rhythm and adding a little bit of punch to your rhythm. So on you strum a G chord and then in between measures, you throw this lick in there and then you come back to a G chord. Here's how that sounds. So as you can tell, it's a great way to add a little bit of dimension, add a little bit of depth to your rhythm guitar offerings. Yes, it's a guitar lick, but you can use it within your rhythm guitar to, well, spice things up a little bit. The second scenario in which you could use this doesn't even involve the entire lick. It just involves the punch it portion, that pull off off the D string into that open G. You can use it in the same exact setting that I just used the entire lick, but you're just using those last few notes. Here's how that sounds. As you can tell, that's the exclamation that I'm talking about. In fact, the more that you play it like that, the more you really wanna dig in. Now there's a final scenario that I want to share with you in terms of how you can use this lick and that's just simply during a solo. You can use it to enter a solo, you can use it to leave a solo. It's a nice it's a nice way to either bookend your solo, use it on the front end or the back end or just kind of open your solo, introduce your solo if you will or add that exclamation point at the end. Here's an example. <laughs> So 
So yeah, just kind of a lot of notes there, but, but you get the idea that you can enter a solo using this lick and then you can kind of leave the solo using this lick. As I mentioned, it adds a nice kind of bookend feature. Okay, so I hope you really dug this lick and I hope you find it well, fun to play because this is the first bluegrass lick that I used aside from the G run, which is this. <laughs> that I really enjoy. I really, I felt like once I learned this, I thought, man, this is so cool. I feel, I feel almost flashy. I didn't know how to use it. And hopefully this helped you learn how to use it. But uh, bottom line, I think it's a really awesome lick. And I want to mention something specific to bluegrass licks, specific to bluegrass flat picking. There's this myth that you have to play everything fast. And if you can't play it fast, then you quite simply have lost the race. That's kind of funny. It's, it's kind of a pun in a way. But in all seriousness, you don't have to play this fast. In fact, I would much rather you play it slowly and cleanly with good tone and good technique than play it fast and sacrifice those things. In fact, I may have even pushed it a little bit in my demo. Really, take this step by step. Take it note for note. Make sure those pull-offs are clean. Make sure those hammer-ons are clean. Make sure those single notes are clean. And then once you get comfortable with each little section, then build the speed on top of that. If you don't have a solid foundation of good, solid, strong notes, hammer-ons, and pull-offs, then once you start adding speed, things are just gonna fall apart. So yes, I know it's cliche, but you have to take it slow first. Once you take it slow, then you can take it fast. Okay, best of luck with this bluegrass lick. Did you check your calendar? Because I have a very important announcement about the upcoming Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party. It's tomorrow, folks. It's tomorrow. October 6th at 11 a.m. Mountain Time is the next Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party. Now, at the beginning of the show, I asked a question. Do you ever set a guitar goal and completely lose track of it? Well, here's what usually happens. Us guitar geeks, we have the best of intentions. We set a goal and we say, I'm gonna totally do this. I'm gonna work towards this, it's gonna be great. But we have no clear path forward. We have no distinct way to get to that goal. So what happens? That goal gets pushed along the wayside. Well, the whole purpose of the 90 day progress party is to make sure that you not only set a goal, but have a clear path towards achieving that goal. So you can feel good about it. So you can accomplish it. So you can build that positive momentum in your guitar journey. That's the whole mission of the 90 day progress party. In fact, the entire TAC family gets together on Zoom. It's the coolest thing in the world. You get to meet your fellow TAC family members. You get to talk about what goal you want to achieve over the next 90 days. You get to talk about your guitar routine and with the help of your fellow TAC family members, you get to troubleshoot your routine and your goal so that you can kind of forecast what could derail you, what could get in your way and make a plan around that. It is an incredible time and I want you to be there. So again, it's tomorrow, October 6th at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Make sure to log in your Tony's Acoustic Challenge account. You'll see a banner right at the top of your homepage. Just click the link, boom, you'll be there on Zoom with all of your TAC family friends. And you'll also get an email with the link. So don't worry, you won't miss out on it at all. Oh, hey, did I mention that the next Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party is tomorrow, October 6th at 11 a.m. Mountain Time? Oh, I did? I did? Okay, cool. I can't wait to see you there. Okay, moving on. <laughs> moving on, I want to I wanna take a look at a guitar signal here. This one is going to find us going to Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. We're going to check out Matthew Mike Sell's guitar signal. Matthew's also known as Big Sky 1470, and here's what he has in his guitar signal. He's got a Yamaha FG700S named Adeline that he got from Guitars for Vets. Next, a 2004 Fender Standard HSS Stratocaster named Beatrix that he got used from Music Go Round. Check this out. The color, Midnight Wine, was discontinued continued in 2015. So while other guitars might come and go, I'm hanging on to this one, he says. The larger amp is a Fender Mustang LT25 that he named Mustang Sally. That's quite fitting. And he says, aside from using the acoustic sim preset, he also likes Blues Lead 1, Blues Lead 2, Surf, and Rockabilly presets. And lastly, the Orange Crush mini amp is named Florence. Matthew, thank you so much for sharing your guitar signal with us. It's always fun for us guitar geeks to Google at fellow Guitar Geeks, Guitar Snows, a lot of G's in there. Very confusing for me to say. Now, before we move on with the rest of the show, I do have acoustic news you can use coming right up. I have a special announcement. 
I wanna to propose to you a win-win-win scenario. I wanna feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I wanna feature you and your guitar arsenal or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar arsenal shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar arsenal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. It is now time for acoustic news you can use, and I have a healthy dose of it for you today. I wanna to talk about Gibson's Generation Series. This is the new line of guitars that they launched a couple of weeks ago. I have some interesting perspective on these guitars, and I wanna share it with you, but we're not gonna get into that first. First, we're gonna check in with Alexander Misko. If you haven't heard of him, you should. He's an amazing fingerstyle guitar player, an amazing composer, an amazing arranger. And actually, I've featured him on the Acoustic Tuesday show before, but I'm gonna feature him in a little bit of a different light. I think all too often, we assume that people wake up with these amazing skills but I have documentation that that's simply not the case. Back in 2000, let me get the date correct, back in 2013, Alexander Misko started arranging Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton. And here's how it sounded then. Fast forward to 2021, Alexander kept working on that arrangement. Here's how it sounds now. I love this for so many reasons. I love seeing how different it sounded in 2013 and how it developed and now sounds in 2021. But more so, I love seeing the proof of progress. I love being able to look back in time and see where guitar players were and how much they've grown and how much they've really progressed. I think progress is this, this mystery that we all chase, but if you have a regular guitar routine, if you show up every day, if you spend a minimum of 10 minutes playing every single day, that progress adds up. And you just saw proof of it from 2013 to 2021. That's a lot of playing time. And it's just, it's just so darn cool to see. Okay, moving on to the next news item. Let's check in with Sean DeBurka. I've featured Sean DeBurka on the Acoustic Tuesday show before. I've featured his guitarsnal on the Acoustic Tuesday show before. Well, Sean is also an amazing fingerstyle guitar player. He's also an amazing composer, arranger, musician. And he covered one of my favorite pop punk songs of all time. Blink-182's song, Wendy Clear, which is clearly written for a pop punk band formation, electric guitar, drums, you name it. Well, he took that song and arranged it for acoustic guitar. And here it is.
so incredible to see Sean play as always. Now I wanna talk Gibson Generation Series. This is the new line of guitars that they launched a couple of weeks ago, and I wanna dig into the nitty gritty, but if you have not seen these guitars yet, here's a quick little promo video. <laughs> Okay, so now you've seen these guitars, let me tell you my honest opinion. I'm excited about them. I'm excited that the price range is $1,000 to $1,200. I'm excited that they're kind of heading in a little bit of a modern direction. But I'm not excited about one thing, and I wanna read you something, and I wanna see if it hits you the same way that it hit me. Here we go. Introducing the Generation Collection, featuring the exclusive Gibson Player Port trademarked for a new sonic experience. Inspired by a 1964 blueprint from our archives, the exclusive Gibson player port, trademarked, delivers every sonic detail to the player, purpose built to hear more of you. So I read this and I think to myself, well, first let me reiterate, I dig the modern direction, I dig the price point, $1,000 to $1,200 for an American made Gibson acoustic guitar. Comparatively speaking, that's pretty inexpensive given the current model lineup that they offer. And I also dig the fact that they're pushing the bar a little bit. They've been leaning on the same models time and time again, so it's nice to see them step a little bit outside their comfort zone. Cool. But what kind of struck me was the verbiage in the description. The trademarked Gibson player port and the 1964 blueprint that they pulled it from. And I guess my concern, and the reason I bring this up, is my concern is that will they claim that they own the trademark to all of the ports ever put in the sides of acoustic guitars from 1964 forward? That's just my concern. And it, it felt a little red flaggy. It felt a little bit it felt a little fishy to me, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm being crazy. Maybe I'm not being crazy. I'd like to hear your thoughts. So please let me know in the comments below. Okay, our next news nugget comes from Elderly Instruments in Lansing, Michigan. Don't worry, you don't have to go there. You can find what I'm talking about on YouTube. It's a series called In the Shop with Joe Conkley. Joe happens to be an incredible repairman that works at Elderly Instruments, and he documents some of the more intense repairs that he does. This series is incredible, and you're going to have a chance to look at it right now. Next, we're going to have to try and fit in these few little shards here and see where they go. I'm gonna have to do some trimming there to fit that in. This piece also has some finish on the outside. That's gonna have to go in here. You can see that fit right there. It's gonna cover up that hole. But I'm gonna have to uh, trim and work all these things to fit those. It's really three different pieces that are gonna cover up these three different holes. That project is just beginning and ongoing. The final piece of news I have for you today has nothing to do with guitar and everything to do with hockey. I know there are some hockey fans within our midst here on Acoustic Tuesday, and I thought, you know, the hockey fans would enjoy this. Mark andre Fleury just showed off pictures of his brand new Chicago Blackhawks goalie mask. It is gorgeous. Sorry again, Vegas, your loss is our gain. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But before we do that, let's take a sneak peek into next week. Next week, I'll be talking about my five favorite Seagull guitars. Yes, we're gonna head north of the border to Canada to check out my five favorite guitars from one of the most awesome Canadian guitar builders. Yes, indeed, my five favorite Seagull guitars is on tap for next week. Remember, you can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show every single Tuesday here on YouTube at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, of course, well, 
every single Tuesday. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today, and please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you again for sharing your time with me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers, and guitar geeks unite. So many coffee mugs. Just a ridiculous amount of coffee mugs. Like, a lot of them. This one's new, love it. This one's not new, also love it. Okay, one sip out of this one.